Hello and welcome to Recharge Wrestling. Fisher here with a special video recapping last this week's AEW Dynamite. We recorded our podcast a, a day earlier than usual. Um, we normally record on a Thursday night, but we recorded on Wednesday night, so Dynamite hadn't happened. So we did a WWE only podcast, um, which is on our YouTube channel, and you can listen to on podcast platforms as well. Um, if you haven't listened to, to that yet, go and watch it, go and listen to it, like and subscribe, all that stuff. Um, but this is just going to be a, a quick video recapping what happened on AEW Dynamite. Um, this is before I've watched Rampage. Um, so, yeah, it's just going to be based on what happened on Dynamite. Obviously, there was last Friday's Rampage, but a lot of that was to do with the build to Double or Nothing. So I'm just going to talk about this one isolated show and run through what happened to give my thoughts on it because it was a very big newsworthy show. Um, and it definitely deserves a video covering it. Um, so CM Punk came out to, to start with, um, with his brand new course AEW title around his waist um, with FTR. Um, they were in a six-man tag team match against the Acclaimed and, uh, no, sorry, it wasn't the Acclaimed. It was Gun Club with Max Caster of the Acclaimed. Um, they did their usual little rap and funny bit at the start. Um they're, they do the, the location bit, which I, I think is a bit silly, that bit, but the rest of it's good. Um, it's nice to still see uh, the other member of the acclaimed. I've just forgotten his name, weirdly. Um, out there, Anthony Bowens, that's it. Um, out there, still, even though he's injured, that, that, I kind of like that. Um, so we've got a six man tag. Um, I did notice that sort of the crowd is louder for CM Punk than they have been in, in recent times. And I think that sort of a lot of the fans were happy that he won the title I feel um, Dax was great in this match um, really fun six man tag team match Punk got a, a hot tag there was a bit of a botch he did where he slipped on the rope coming in but he kind of covered it well and recovered from it um, Billy Gunn at one point got on the rope um, which nearly led to a roll up win for Austin Gunn um, but the finish came when Punk power bombed um, one of the guns into Billy on the side, knocked him off the ring, and then he hit the GTS and um, FTR hit the big rig. Uh, Dax Howard took the pin, uh, got the pin, which was uh, a nice little moment. <clears throat> and a cool cool little trio, uh, This these two, three. They go well together. Um, really like the pairing. Um, and then Punk took the mic afterwards, promo about being, pa uh, being about champion, passionate, and... Dax also did a very um, passionate promo about his family and how wrestling and his family are two, you know, his, the only thing, two things he really cares about in his life. Um, and then they turned their attention to Forbidden Door um, and Tanahashi came out, um, which was a cool moment, actually. Um, crowd went nuts for this. Um, it's one of those moments where I guess if you don't know that much about New Japan Pro Wrestling, you probably wouldn't care that much, but obviously it's a good build for, 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 for Forbidden Door. And Tanahashi is one of the biggest New Japan stars. They've had people come over from New Japan, um, like um, Takashita and a couple of other guys, and some of them are, are good level stars, but Tanahashi is legit one of the top guys over there. And if him and Okada are rumoured as well, Okada's rumoured to be on the card as well. If that happens and those two are on the card, then this show is like a big super show between the two brands because they're like two of the biggest guys you can probably get from New Japan. So, yeah, I, I thought that was a cool moment. Obviously, setting up a match with CM Punk down the line, um, whether or not that happens. Um, but, yeah, cool, cool little moment. Um, then was the biggest moment of the night a huge promo from mjf and obviously on our podcasts we give top marks and skid marks each week um obviously it was a wwe only promo uh promo pro uh podcast this week so we could only rank uh wwe stuff but had had we not done that and we recorded our podcast a normal day this would easily have been my top mark but i'm sure it also Keeney and Krusty would have been fighting over it as well because we normally try and have one each uh, different. Um, but this podcast was unbelievable. It was like the the CM Punk pipe, pipe bomb back in the day. You couldn't work out which bits were real, which which were not. But I think it was more of a case of Tony Khan going like, look, go out there, have the mic, 
air your grievances, but then I can't, don't go too far. And we'll work it into something. We'll cut the mic at the end so it looks like it's, you know, like they did with the punk pipe bomb. They did the same thing. Um, but it's really, really interesting. And it'll be interesting to see whether MJF um, is on the show going forward. Because I predicted after he obviously got carried off on a stretcher, double or nothing, I said we wouldn't see him again for a while because of that. That was an angle to write off. And then he did a promo here. Um, the only thing I did think was a bit odd. He, he, he did mention that he was in pain for his neck, but he didn't really sell it as much as I thought he should have. And that was a slight criticism in terms of that. I like it when a big angle like that, you should be off TV for a couple of weeks before you even do a promo, in my opinion. Um, but he could have at least worn a neck brace or something. I don't know. But in terms of the actual promo, genuinely one of the best promos I've ever heard. Um, it was absolutely incredible. So, so good from MJF. Um, he talked about being disrespected, which, you know, and, and, and the, what I loved about this promo is it felt like everything he's saying, he had a legitimate good point on. Talked about being respect, uh, disrespected, not given what he deserves backstage from the fans, from everybody. Um, talked about, you know, they're cheering him now, but they're all calling him an unprofessional piece of shit <laughs> um, at the weekend. Um, talked about, you know, he actually mentioned WWE, he didn't just say from another company, he said, if I came from WWE, would you do, you know, you'd pay me more, which is true because there's a lot of information out there about how much former WWE guys are getting compared to AEW originals. And the fact that MJF has become so big, you know, it, there's a lot of truth to that. Um, and he basically begs Tony Khan to fire him, um, calling him a mark, um, lots of swearing and stuff like that in it, which you don't, I mean, he does swear a little bit, but this was <laughs> more than the normal amount. So it was a very interesting promo. I thought it was awesome. I've watched it two or three times because it was so good. I watched it when I did the, when I watched the program, obviously, but then I watched it back a couple of times. It's been clipped up on Twitter, the whole sort of eight minute segment or whatever. Um, <clears throat> just such a good promo. Um, and it's interesting to see what happens going forward. Will they bring Tony Khan as an, in as an on-screen character in this and have like a, a sort of, not an Austin McMahon feud, but more like a CM Punk Triple H type thing? Um, I personally hope not because every time I've seen Tony Khan as an on-screen character, I don't personally think he's very good at that. I think he's much better keeping behind the scenes. Um, but I think maybe we won't see MJF for a little while now concentrate on some other feuds they've got forbidden door coming up is he going to be a person that's necessarily facing someone from new japan I, I don't think so necessarily so i think you can get away with keeping him off for a few weeks maybe have him maybe cut promos here and there but not doing anything in particular for a while um and AEW have really played into this they've removed his merch they've um, removed him from the roster page they've done all sorts of stuff um pretty much laying into this in the, in the work side of it now, even though there is legitimacy to behind it. So I really like what they're doing here and it's interesting to see how this goes and how this is resolved. And is MJF going to come out of this satisfied now because he's going to get a huge storyline or, or is this, or is it right? Cause he said it's too little to late. There's no coming back. Maybe that is true. And he's going to just wait out his contract work, but like, not you know and then leave i think it's the first of january in like 2024 so he's still got another 18 months on his contract so it'll be very interesting to see how that plays out um but yeah it's, it was an awesome promo um then we had johnny elite come out um which i didn't expect i thought his appearance was a one and done actually um but he comes back for a second match in AEW, and he got beaten again i, I don't really see the point in him turning up and just being beaten I, I think he's he's a good he's a great wrestler John Morrison but um what do they have any plans for him here or are they just bringing him to do this basically be a jobber um but what was really cool is we got the return of Miro who has been gone for a long time and he cut an awesome promo on the screen before this as well just feels like a really big star these days um uh, Miro does um and Miro just uh, yeah, sort of slowly dismantled him, really. Um, match finished when um, Johnny went for a shooting star, which he actually got a one count from. Um, and then, that, sorry, that was before the finish. The finish came from 
Um, Johnny going again off the top rope, misses. Um, Mira hit him with a pump kick and then the game over submission, um, which he won and tapped out. Then we got the Jericho Appreciation Society off the back of their win at Double or Nothing. Um, Matt Menard hit, uh, put some WWE sort of rib lines in there, saying, it, calling the fans AEW Galaxy, saying, appreciate us instead of acknowledge me. Kind of funny, but also a little bit lame. Um, <laughs> talk, started talking then more about um, Eddie Kingston, Brian Danielson, um, and then Eddie comes out to the ramp with Regal. And Regal did his, his famous line. Is it, people have been waiting for this, I think. Um, Regal obviously used to say war games, which we used to say a lot on the pod, the impressions of them. We were talking about war games last year and stuff. Um, and he used the blood and guts line instead. It, didn't, it wasn't quite as good as the war games line back in the day, but um, I say back in the day, it was only like a year ago. Um, but yeah, that was a cool moment. I, I thought they really played into that nicely. Um, so that was cool. Um, they stopped beating up Eddie, Jericho, appreciation society, but what is came in, Ortiz came in, hits Jericho um, and cut off a bit of his hair, weirdly. Um, Jericho eventually agrees to the blood and guts match, um, but says first he wants a hair versus hair match with Ortiz, which is very interesting. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen there. It's, I, I can't imagine Jer- bald Jericho, so I reckon Jericho might end up winning that, but I don't know. Um, Santana and Ortiz lose all the time as well, and Jericho's sort of a single star, so I think it'll probably go that way, but who knows. Um, then we've got a 10-man tag, a fun 10-man tag team. Um, you had uh, Jurassic Express, Darby, Christian Cage, and Matt Hardy versus the Undisputed Elite, which had Hikaleo in instead of Adam Cole. Jeff Hardy was ringside. News coming out of Double or Nothing is he's beat up and injured like he can't wrestle at the moment he needs some time off he was there but yeah he, he in ring he's not been cleared adam cole also is carrying a bit of an injury i believe which is why he was on commentary for this match and hikaleo wrestled instead hikaleo was a core addition to the undisputed elite here because he gave a big guy um you know that they're, they're quite small guys aren't they really um little sort of cruiserweight style high-flying wrestlers or technical in the case of fish and o'reilly but yeah um Hikaleo added something different here, I thought. And him going off against like Luchasaurus was cool. Um, and Luchasaurus, for me, was the MVP in this match. He was awesome. Uh, dives to the outside. Just uh, He had a really cool hot tag at one point. He was just uh, you know, taking out everybody. Uh, Darby had some cool stuff, as always, flying around the ring. Um, there was a nice uh, spear by Christian to the outside. Um, and then... But uh, that led to a super kick party in the ring, high low, and a Meltzer driver from the Young Bucks, and he undisputed elite got the win. Interesting little bit afterwards, Matt Hardy tried to sort of give Jungle Boy a hug, and then Christian pushed Matt away, and they leave. Um, I still think there's something in this Jungle Boy Christian stuff. They they keep hinting at it. AW does tend to carry these out a long time. We've seen it with like you know MJF and Wardlow, Omega and Page, even Julia Hart joining. Um, the House of Black. So yeah, it, they tend to carry out these these storylines for quite a while, don't they? So I can see this going on for a little little bit. Sorry about that. I'm back. Just realised my laptop was running out of battery. I thought it was plugged in. It wasn't. Right. Um, there's always got to be a botch on my shows, isn't there? Whether it's maybe not putting the headphones on at the start or something like that, but. It, all adds to the content, I think. Um, I don't mind. I don't mind that. Not gonna. Not gonna edit it out. No. Um, then we got Athena come to the stage for her first promo, and AEW of course made her debut at Double or Nothing. Mentioned Dre, Jade straight away. Um, Says so she'll be a streak. I, I always find her quite awkward on the mic. Athena. I think she's a brilliant in ring wrestler. Don't think she's necessarily the best promo, but she was okay here. Um, Stokely Hathaway also came out with Jade and cut his first promo. He's awesome on the mic. Um, good stuff there. Anna Jay and Chris Statlander come out and he just had a little six-person standoff. So I think we're just going to get that six-woman tag, aren't we, first of all, um, which was hinted at the pay-per-view as well. No real advancement here, to be honest. Then we got Wardlow, of course, on the back of his big win at Double or Nothing, faced JD Drake. Quick squash match for him, just a couple of power bombs. Um, and then, but the, interestingly, then Mark Sterling come down, and I and I kind of like the story, like the angle here. But I don't really know where it leads in terms of who 
who Wardlow's going to wrestle. But um, yeah, he says that obviously Wardlow's been beating up security a lot in the Max feud. In the Max, I'm just called Max there, like he's my mate, Ma- MJF feud. Um, and yeah, so he was saying he was going to sue, uh, basically. And um, Wardlow just didn't care and started beating up the security anyway, um, which is fine, but I don't know where that's going to lead to. Um, then you got Sky and Dante Martin facing off ahead of their match on Rampage. Uh, Scorpio Sky with his new title and his suit. I, I just put that he looks like an absolute star. I think he's awesome. Um, then we got uh, Tony Storm and Ruby Soho versus Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter in the women's match. Uh, decent enough action. These four have been sort of not f- properly feuding, but obviously they they were involved in that Owen Hart tournament, weren't they? which um, Britt won, but it was kind of just 50-50 booking here um, with Ruby pinning Britt with the destination unknown after getting out of the, the locked jaw. So, yeah, not really interesting stuff from the, the women's feuds again here. No Thunder Rosa as well on the show, which did, is noted, um, and she was not very happy about sort of not having a segment on the show, apparently, after after winning at double or nothing. And it does feel directionless. She'd hardly featured in the build-up, it felt like. And I do feel like this women's division, we mention it a lot, but it still needs a lot of work. I feel like Jade is being booked okay. I feel like Britt Baker, the, the, the division revolves around her a lot. But other than that, honestly, it, it's slim pickings, um, to be honest. And I think they need to do a bit better with it. Then we got the main event of... Daniel Garcia and John Moxley. Uh, William Regal and Chris Jericho were on commentary again, as they have been a lot during their kind of teams matches. Mox got boasted, uh, busted open at one point here. There was some biting from Garcia. It's quite a violent match um, without being like weapons and stuff, but it was phys- very physical. Um, sharpshooter attempted from Garcia at one point as well. Mox launched Garcia onto some steps on the outside. That looked painful. And they're brawling on the outside. The table didn't break. They were, both went over the table. Um, but the finish uh, the finish happened when Jericho ran off of commentary, come down to the ring. Eddie Kingston come out to stop him. And then Moxie hit the paradigm shift and the submission uh, to win. And that's kind of how the show ended. Um, it was a decent main event. Nothing to write home about. I think the better stuff, actually, the big newsworthy stuff was early on in the show with MJF, with the return of Miro, uh, the CM Punk stuff obviously being world champion so yeah a lot of the stuff happened earlier on in the show that was was really good and newsworthy but this, the whole show was solid I thought it was a top tier level dynamite uh, particularly like I say the first half I thought was unbelievably good um, and then the second half was pretty solid so yeah really good show this week hopefully we'll be back to recording on Thursday next week so we'll have you covered with all of our stuff so Rampage from tomorrow uh, from tonight, sorry, uh, Dynamite from next week, as well as all of the WWE stuff. We do have In Your House and Hell in a Cell coming up t- as well this weekend. Get your predictions in for them if you haven't already, because I've been putting up the NXT ones. The Hell in a Cell ones will go out as well later this weekend uh, before the show. Watch our YouTube channel. if you Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, Hell in a Cell. It, we should have a hopefully have a podcast coming up for that or some sort of review even if it's just from me um you can watch my gm mode on here from keeney and our usual pods and everything but yeah that's about it follow us on twitter at recharge wrestle and i'll see you soon goodbye <laughs>